Well, good morning. One of the things we say here at YGBC is God gets the glory for what things that he does. God gets the glory. When things happen, it's for him to receive the glory. And um, Mike Wexler, why don't you come on up? And Mike's been coming here for a couple months now. And I think we hit the months, haven't we? Have we hit the months? Month and a half, so we'll call it months. How's that sound? And uh, Mike's been coming here, and, and Mike shared, hey, I, I want to I wanna share my testimony and, and talk about what God's done. And that's one of the things we love here at YGBC is to, when, when God does something, he gets the glory. And so that's the opportunity for you to share this morning about, and, and this is kind of a Jordan moment, because you're not a public speaker. There it is. There it is. He's got it. He's... He is stepping in the Jordan right now to share your testimony. So I'll give you the microphone here. And, and Mike, why don't you just share a little background about what, what, what God has done in your life. Is that on? Yep, you're good. All right, thank you. Yeah, this is a Jordan moment for me because, uh, well, this would be the first time I've ever done a public speaking. Um, I have struggled with social anxiety disorder for my whole life. Um, and shyness to the point where I would be downright rude to people who would try to be friendly with me. You know, that, that stranger danger, why are you talking to me, go away, yeah. you know. Um, but it's been through Jesus that I've been able to come out of that and, and talk to people. And I want to just share a brief, my brief story with you uh, for two reasons. One, it helps me come out of that shell and be a better Christian, a better brother to all of you. Uh, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. And secondly, to maybe inspire those of you who are struggling with the same things that I might have struggled with. Um, I was raised an atheist. My parents were born believers, uh, raised as believers. But then at some point in their lives, they decided to walk away from that. They didn't want anything to do with Jesus. They wanted to live uh, their lives their way, you know, the, the sinful way. So growing up, I wasn't taught that God was real. I was taught that Jesus you know, that manger scene next to Santa Claus was just as much fiction as Santa Claus was. I associated the two together. Um, maybe some of you did as well growing up. So then, you know, it was a choice for me, believe in God or don't believe in God. Well, I chose not to. So, you know, what, what's the problem with that? Well, that caused me to live a life of sin. It caused me to become an alcoholic so young that I actually quit drinking before I was old enough to start drinking. That alcoholism caused me to steal money so I could support that alcoholism. Well, dropped out of high school, I'm living a life of sin, I'm stealing, of course I end up in prison. I'm 49 years old now and I can stand here and say that I have spent 20 years and one month of my life in prison through four separate installments over a 29 year period of time. In and out, in and out. Why? Because I didn't know God. All I knew was Satan and the hooks that he had in me. You know, I would come out of prison, fall right back into that rut, living a life of sin. Uh, you know, instead of knocking on Jesus' door saying, hey, can I come to know you? I would knock on the harlot's door and say, hey, can I sleep with you? You know, so not knowing God, of course, I'm just going to be a miserable, lost, wandering soul. It was in prison that I finally came to know God. You know, I, I realized there had to be something to this. There's millions of believers out there. You can't all be naive fools. You know, I was the naive fool, accusing you of being the naive fool. You know, but then I realized there's got to be something to this. There can't be a million idiots in the world. You know, there are some, we see them every day. But there had to be some truth to this. So I decided to give it a chance. Started going to church. I started listening. I started reading the Bible, actually studying it. And... I've always been King James, and I know King James can be a little hard to understand with that old English vernacular, so I got myself a study Bible, and I would search the scripture and try to understand it. And then I realized, okay, I've been missing out on something my whole life. Here I am in my 40s, finally realizing that God's real. And I just felt, oh, what a waste of life. All the time I've wasted, I could have had that relationship but I chose not to. And that's so easy for so many people to do, and it's sad when I see people living to this day, they're just choosing to live the life that I chose to make, and I wish I could just drag them to church and say, listen, get your head out of the sand. You don't know what you're missing. Um, so I finally accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior about three years ago, um, and unfortunately, both of my parents died while I was incarcerated, and they died non-unbelievers and scripture tells me that therefore they are spending eternity in hell um, I wish that weren't true but I believe it to be 
Um, whether that is or isn't, I can't worry about that. I have to worry about my life now. Um, I am homeless, technically. I sleep in the men's shelter at Life Path. I am employed, so things are going well. I won't be homeless much longer. Um, so things are looking up. So, you know, trusting God is one of the things I wrote on here because I trust God every day to just give me peace and joy in life. I'm not miserable. I don't, I, you know, I have to spend the weekends just wandering the streets like a hobo, but I'm not miserable in doing that. You know, and God has rewarded me. Uh, two weeks ago, I was walking here in the rain and found a $5 bill laying on the street. He bought me lunch. You know, <laughs> didn't ask for that. I wasn't wandering the streets thinking, God, I wish I had more money. I was just fine. I was just thinking, hey, it's a nice day anyway. Five bucks. Thank you, Lord. So there's that one. And then on the other one, I put public speaking because, like I said, this is my first time doing that. And I thank God for it. And it's only through his grace and his mercy that I'm able to do that. Um, contentment, and I'll wrap this up real quick. Contentment was the big thing for me. I, you know, like I mentioned, I wanted more. Growing up, I was stealing because I wanted more. You know, I would deliver pizzas for Domino's to wealthy homes, and I would see your nice home, your nice car, your beautiful wife, and I would think, I want what you got. I can't have it. You know, it's not what God wants for me, but I want it anyway. I struggled with contentment. Now as a Christian, I won't read the scriptures. You can look them up if you want to. Um, now I have contentment because God gives me that peace. You know, I could be flat broke. I'm employed, but I could be flat broke like I was months ago and just be okay with that because it's what God wants for me and I accept that because I have that relationship with him and I'm thankful for it so if you don't have that relationship I encourage you to speak to a pastor and make that happen don't live in sin it, it's it's not what God wants for you it, it, you, you, you could have a better life amen thank you amen, amen. all right thank you we pray for you here yeah. Let's, uh, let's pray for Mike. Father God, thank you for, for Mike's courage. I pray that you would bless him for, for just giving him the courage to stand up here and to share. And Father, I pray that, again, his words will challenge all of us. We all have a story. We all have a, something to tell that you have done in our lives. We, you've, you've woken us up. If, if we are Christ followers, we have a new life with you. And Father, I pray you give Mike the opportunity to share this testimony with many, many more people, just to be able to share what you have done and to let his words connect with their hearts. Father, we, we thank you for what you're doing, for the, the positive traction he's getting. Father, continue to bless him. Open the doors to the apartment, to the place you want him to live, and just to allow him to continue to experience your blessing as he follows you. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives and in our church. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, Mike, you might have to say hi to some more people now. They, they know your name. 